All right, we're recording. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Orlin Vasilev, and I'm the community manager for Valero. Uh, today is February 21st, in, uh, and that's the official community meeting. So uh, in general, just be nice to each other, and please follow the code of conduct. I've pasted in the chat the, the link to our community meeting. I'll do it once again. So if you like it, add your topics there so we can discuss them or if you have some updates or you want to address some PRs or some issues, uh, that's the place to do it. So with that, I'm going to share that same document. I'm going to refresh. And all right, I think we're, we're good to go. And Ivan, I can see you've added a few stuff or you can take it away. Yeah, it's going to be like a super short um, item here. Uh, so uh, just a couple of weeks ago, like um, I chatted with Scott about the uh, idea of like uh, extending like the new include and exclude resource filters with uh, something called field selectors. And uh, the, the idea is to resolve some of the uh, existing issues that uh, where um, users have been requesting for a f um, the ability to uh, just filter resources by um, name as a starting like um, field. Um, so yeah, you know, like I yeah, just put together like a, a proposal, like hoping to get some um, feedback from folks. Uh, I've been um, just chatting with um, Daniel and Ming on um, a different uh, pull request proposal, which is, um, Related, we're just trying to see if uh, you know if this is a, a potentially like extension or duplication of the other proposal that being put together, or is this like um, an extension of another PR that uh, I think I believe Zoom um, put together as well. So, um, but overall, like one way or the other, like um, on our side, like um, you know, basically we just want a way to be able to filter like uh, resources by like. Um, you know, some of the existing uh, resource fields, like name, starting with name, basically, um, the main problem behind it that we're trying to solve is just oh. backing up of custom resource definitions there. So yeah, if, if folks have uh, a couple of minutes um, here and there, like, uh, you know, pre appreciate some feedback from there. Um, yeah, I think the, the idea is really just to change like uh, that, um, proposal that uh, 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 that I believe Zoom put together um, around like changing like the type of the filters from like a slice of string to like, uh, you know, like some sort of um, a slice of selectors or something. I'm um, using like the existing like um, Kubernetes um, API machinery um, package, which has like, um, you know, just support for like field selectors and all the other things so related to selection. Oh, um, yeah, so that's me. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, um, well, I, I, I will add more comments uh, in the uh, discussion under the PR by Ming, but uh, currently my thought is I, I slightly prefer we add more complexity in that uh, data structure rather than adding more uh, change to the backup CR because that First, I don't think that will be uh, merged into 1.11 because 1.11, we are pretty close to FC and we, we wanna implement what has already planned and merged, which is Shun's design regarding um, adding separate filter regarding uh, namespace scope resource and uh, uh, cluster scope resource. And, and that was focused on the type of the resource rather than names. and. Uh, uh, if we merge that change, that will introduce a big change to the spec uh, comparing to what Shun has proposed. And in addition to that, I, I think your your only uh, uh, a concrete scenario is is adding additional uh, custom CR custom resource definition to the backup, which does not have a custom resource, right? Yeah, uh, and also like. Um... I think that custom resource definition is the first one. Um, there are also like cl uh, cluster roles. Uh, and sometimes um, yeah, also like weird, other weird stuff like um, network policy, for example. They don't come out oh, often. 
Yeah, but do you think uh, that will be doable by adding new field into the data structure proposed by Ming? Um, I'm slightly uh, prefer not to add uh, additional attributes to the spec of the backup, e especially in terms of filters, because there are too many filters and oftentimes uh, when a user uh, or even us are confused, uh, I mean, uh, which user or when when those user uh, exist together and uh, how uh, and they conflict with each other and how whatever will behave. Yeah, you know, like at the end of the day, like, um... Mm -hmm. I'm okay with either way. Uh, uh -huh. It's just like, um, you know, like, I, I guess uh, I, I get your point. Like, I'm um, just the balance between like, I'm um, floating the API versus like, um, you know, like um, mm -hmm. a more familiar like user, user experience. Um, mm -hmm. So I, yeah, you know, like as we discussed, like um, in the uh, Ming's PR, I think mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, like I think I and then reading through like the existing comments and stuff like that, I think like um there is like room for there def definitely valid use cases for a policies type of concepts and mm -hmm. uh, resources. Mm -hmm. Um and, and the, the only reason why I bring up like um something like uh you know why I think um you know I bring up the few selectors and I think like you know we should tag it on top of the um June's PR, whether now or later. Is because you know, I, I guess my 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 fair enough thought is like we are already changing it, right? We are already making a very big change. Um, so like, um, either way, like whether it goes to um, uh, you get tagged on top of the you get added on top of the new filter requests or the policies resources. Um, I think like there is some like uh, flexibility there on our side. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like maybe we can just continue to discuss it during the discussion session. So, yeah, but 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 you're okay that one doesn't go into 1.11, right? Because um, um, that will be a, my concern is that, um, that that's not a really incremental change because that uh, it's a break change to uh, whatever uh, Shun is going to implement in yeah. version 1.11, right? So, so yeah. that, that that's a little, yeah, problematic. I think yeah, it would yeah, be yeah, yeah, I was uh, sorry. I, uh, I, yeah, I was going to say, say the same thing. I, I think, however we implement it, we're talking about something that hasn't been fully designed yet. So we're three weeks away from you know feature complete. So I think either way, we're talking about something that we want to, you know, get the design for, but probably won't be implemented until. I mean, definitely won't be implemented in one eleven. The question is, if we accept that we're going to implement this in one twelve. If it's still the right place to, you know, put it on top of the existing design, you know, that'll be another change in one twelve or whenever we implement it. Uh, I think we. I guess my point is, I think we need to decide where's the logical place from a user API point of view to put it, regardless of release schedules. But knowing that either way, this is a this is a change that hasn't been fully spec'd out yet. So clearly, we're not going to get it into a release that we're supposed to be complete in three weeks for. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm totally fine if uh, we don't get it into one or eleven, and yeah, I'm realistically speaking, like um, yeah, that's, that's we know we know that's not gonna happen. Um, and hence, you know, like um, at this stage, you know, I'm just hoping to um get some comments there in, in the design in the proposal. So I mean, like um, Daniel, what what you just said was uh was great. Like um, you know, I guess like uh, for posterity, I think we could just like um, uh, maybe just add it to like um to the pull request as a comment or something. Mm -hmm. um, so, sure. yeah. So, yeah, yeah, uh, I'll do that. And uh, yeah, really appreciate you, you know, uh, sharing your thoughts. And uh, I think that's a really valid requirement. But yeah, thank you. Let's continue for this question. You, <clears throat> any more on this topic or we can switch to Scott's topics? No, okay. Uh, Scott. Um, yeah. So um, this is the ongoing um, backup item action v2 controller uh, work. Um, the PR has been out there a couple weeks now. We um, actually had quite a bit of review and changes over the last week. Um, at this point, um, where I am is um, 
I'll, let me just kind of describe where I am and kind of where the discussion is going uh, for context, because I know it's also a discussion topic. Um, basically, um, the issue brought up last week was that we didn't have a mechanism in the original PR to persist into the backup um, status changes that happened um, through, during that asynchronous operation. Um, and that was actually an oversight that we did need to fix. That was actually a good observation um, because even on the OADP side, we had a problem because um, one of the things that we need to do there is that the um, data mover backup uh, resource um, has certain um, annotations that we're adding during that process when Volsync is pushing that into uh, the storage location. Um, and those annotations are needed when we restore the item. So we definitely need some mechanism to at the end of those asynchronous operations, once we've declared they're all done, we've set the status to persist those into object store. Um, so where I went with that for the next iteration was um, basically to, we, we already have the mechanism for adding additional items from a, a backup item action plug. And we use that, for example, for the CSI plugin anyway. And that is the mechanism, again, on the OADP side that we were using for the data mover backup to, to make sure that got included in the backup. So I added that. Uh, and so what I did was I set up a mechanism so that we had a, a new finalized phase. Uh, and again, I think this part, the fact that we need a controller to act on the, the, the backup at the end Again, I think there's no disagreement there. What basically what happens is in the workflow is that the backup controller finishes. It's in waiting for plugin operations. We have a plugin, uh, a async action monitoring plugin that on some configurable schedule checks, calls the plugin progress and all those operations. When all the operations are done, it's tested into the finalized phase. And then on finalized, we have a controller that's gonna pick that up. And this finalized controller Again, high level, what it needs to do is persist into object store those resources that um, were modified during those operations that happened potentially after the original lack of processing began. Um, so what the PR is currently doing is basically, and initially I'm thinking, okay, I need, a, I need um, to write a controller here that basically gets these resources out of the cluster and persists them to the backup. Um, one thing I realized when I implemented that is that there are actually a bunch of things that we do when we back up an item. Um, one of them is doing the um, GVR negotiation to figure out a you know, preferred version and then backing up whatever versions are in the cluster. Um, that's all handled in the current backup, uh, uh, backup item. We also have plugins that currently run on resources. And um, my thinking here was, if a user has a general plugin that operates on everything that puts a say a certain annotation or you know may needs to may need to do certain things um, for compliance reasons, um, ideally you'd want that to run on everything, including these items. Um, and uh, my thinking was that it was actually more straightforward to go through and use that backup item um, logic that already exists um, to do that. Um, you know, one thing that I did have to do, which I think was part of the, some of the comments in the PR about complexity is that um, when you run through in the finalized phase, there are certain aspects to that that we want to skip. Um, you know, we don't want to be pulling in other things, additional items at that point. We're not messing with RESTIC or any of um, that in the snapshots. So backup item does a bunch of things. There's a few of those that we want to skip second time around, but most of what it does, we still want to do. And the other thing is the backup item handles the logic around um, streaming the file to the tarball, uh, figuring out the file name, um, all of that, you know, it could, because we actually have to create a temporary file in the file system and then read the file and then you know, write it. So, so all of that logic is already there in the backup item. Um, and the other thing was on the restore side, so my, my original idea too was, oh, we'll just modify the tarball and re-upload it. But that's actually very complicated because you'd have to stream through the tarball for each item, restream it out. And so basically what, I, what I'm doing in this PR is basically creating a separate tarball during finalize, which is just those items that the asynchronous actions um, need to update. Um, and so now we have two tarballs, although the second was optional because um, you won't have it if there aren't any asynchronous actions uh, in the backup. 
um, that required a small change on the restore side where we now pass into the extract uh, function two tarballs. We extract them in order. So if any, fi any files that are in the second that are also in the first, just overwrite them. Any files that are in the second that are not in the first, just get added. So, so either way, um, the result is um, the equivalent of modifying in the original tarball, um, except we don't have to upload the whole thing twice. Um, so that's, that's where we are now with the PR. Um, and, and again, I know there were some concerns about um, the complexity of, of you know, having those checks in backup item um, about whether it's finalized. I just, but looking at this now, and I'm kind of thinking about this with the comments and, 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 the, and the back and forth, I think we have to create a whole new workflow for this uh, to create this completely separate tarball that's not part of the backup. And then the restore right. side has to have more workflow around that as well, because then we have to treat them separate. Because, because one advantage of this approach is restore doesn't care whether it was in the original tarball or in the finalized tarball. The only place in restore that cares is the extract method. Once we extract, it's just one, you know, file system area and the and the uh, all of the uh, the archive package that accesses those on the restore side. They they all get accessed. So that's so that that's kind of where we are with that. Um, Scott, so in the yes. daytime, I, I, I chatted it with Yong Hui, but since there's some misunderstanding, I wish to first clarify with you about your scenario. Okay. Yep. So, so are you saying you you modified the resource when uh, in the async operation and you want to put that in the backup tarball? So the resource you are putting in the uh, backup tarball during the async operate after the async operation, is it part of user's workload? Um, well, or it's some new CR you created. For well, the it's, it's, it's it's if you think about it again, I, I think it's analogous. Um, the, the existing CSI plugin does something similar. Um, there's no asynchronous action there, but the CSI plugin creates the um, the volume snapshot resource. That right. volume snapshot resource didn't exist before you did the backup with CSI plugin. Um, yeah. The volume the, the the CSI plugin adds that as an additional item. Which causes Valero to pull uh -huh. that into the backup, even though it didn't yeah. exist, you know, before, yeah. and that gets saved in the regular tarball. Um, I think you right. had an example, you know, in yeah, one of uh, one of your VMware use cases that was similar, where you created something that didn't exist before the backup, created by Valero, that's backed up in the regular tarball. The only so, difference yeah. here is it may not be finished, you know, because it is it's a long ongoing operation, so we're going to have to update it when the status is complete. Otherwise, it's identical in use case to the CSI plugins volume snapshot. It's something so, that only uh, plugin needs. Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, actually, uh, when we talk about whether the, the data belong to the workload or user users data, uh, uh, we need to check or we need to see that if the data uh, is it, from the user's workload or, or, or application or namespace. Actually, for the CSI, uh, case, uh, uh, part, uh, it, uh, something like that, uh, uh, even the volume snapshot is from the user's uh, namespace, right? So, oh, 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 I see what you're saying. So you're saying, you're mm. saying that in the, in the, the, the scenario you're talking about, the um, backup operate, sorry, the, the um, snapshot backup is going to be in the Valero works Valero use in namespace or the no, user I, namespace? I mean the volume snapshot object. Yeah, yeah, you're right, right, but right, right. Volume mm. snapshot is, is in the is in the user namespace. Yes. Uh, yeah. My question so, is, uh, and and uh, it's also uh, it's also some uh, uh, from some building, uh, and I mean the building data from Kubernetes. And most importantly, when when we uh, uh, let's imagine a case that uh, the Valero, uh, we don't have Valero and we want to restore some data. If the data belongs to the user space, that is some data we must restore and uh, yeah. uh, in any way. Uh, but uh, if the data doesn't belong to the user, uh, uh, belong to the user workload, it means that there may be some data created by the Valero and for the, uh, to, to maintain some internal state. And that data uh, is not necessary actually uh, for, for, uh, for the user, uh, for restoring uh, to a user's, uh, I mean, workload. Okay. So, um, uh, so uh, uh, let me just add one, one more yep. thing. Uh, sure. And, uh, and, uh, 
uh, so uh, this can do, uh, why do we need to uh, distinguish these two kinds of data? Because these two, two kinds of data are with different life cycle and different, uh, 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 something like the uh, security re requirement. For example, we want to uh, in future and and actually even 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 for the current CSI uh, implementation, I don't think uh, it, it is uh, it is a good behavior because uh, anyway we can uh, delete the the volume sum short and volume sum short content and uh, then we can uh, we just uh, need to uh, uh, back up some metadata inside the volume sum short volume sum short content. So uh, so that is uh, even even for the CSI sum short is not not so, so necessary to put them into the backup table. So I, I don't think that even that is, an, is, a, is a good behavior, but uh, it, anyway, it's a, it's a current behavior. And come back to the backup, uh, I mean, the backup data, and we want to, disc, uh, uh, to differentiate the, uh, uh, the, the user's workload back, backup data and the very internal data. That is to, for the, for the uh, future involvement with I think it's a, uh, it's a, a good thing because we can manage the uh, the data in a different way and uh, so we we need to uh, uh when we add a new feature we 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 want to avoid uh, put unnecessary data in the backup table that is why uh, we uh, we uh, we that that is uh, uh, about the persistent thing and the other thing is uh, once uh, we Treat um, the data as uh, uh, backup data or as uh, the data uh, in the uh, uh, in the backup table. It means uh, we need to go, uh, go through in the entire backup workflow, and so so uh, where uh, that is where we, we we come to revisit the backup uh, uh, item backup at the finalizing case. Yep. And if we don't ha uh, don't treat that kind of data as uh, backup data, we will not need to uh, uh, to to call the backup again. Uh, in the finalizer case. So that's... Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's, so, that's, so a couple yeah. things. I, I guess first, um, we're actually not doing the whole backup workflow. I, I, I'm actually... The, the backup item is just one step in the backup workflow, and that's that's the only one that's being repeated. Um, but I, I had a question for Shubham, actually. Um, so for our ODP data mover backup, that that's in the user workload namespace, right? Or is that in um, the Valero namespace? Yeah, the uh, CI exists in the application namespace. Uh, no, the, you mean the snapshot backup CR? Uh, well, yes, but but the, the the equivalent of snapshot backup for the ODP data mover that we're implementing on top of one eleven. Um, so we're putting that in the user namespace. Um, at this point. No, so no, that... we for the snapshot backup CR, we put that in in Valero namespace. Okay, that, that's that's and, why and... I'm making the distinguishing. There's there's the Valero data mover that we're designing now that we're going to be implementing post one eleven, but then ODP has a data mover that we're already using. That we're modifying to use the async plugins in 111 to build our OEDP 1.2, which is going to be released right after 111. And so that OEDP data mover um, that exists before the Valera data mover is putting um, what we're calling a volume snap um, a data mover backup, which is similar, I think, in function to the um, the the snapshot backup. Snapshot backup. Um, yeah. And but that's in the the way that's implemented now. It's in the user namespace. So that's so that's why the, the CSI plugin. Example. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it, it may be that we need um, both aspects. I mean, the the thing that I realized when I was uh, initially my my because my first th thought with finalized was let's just you know directly back this up and not use anything from the from the backup. But I realized that the the backup item was doing a lot of things that we needed, um, and it would have actually been more code to write and more implementation to start that, do that from scratch, because one of the, you know, because we have the code, for example, and the, one of the things the backup item does is it, it, it handles the, you know, once you, once you have the item, you know, it pulls the item, the temporary, um, so, so, so we, we, we grab the item, um, you know, from the cluster, um, we, but, but when it streams it out, we actually, you know, it has the code for, it because you pass in to backup item, the, the tar writer, um, figures out the right file name um, using the item collector, um, especially with the GVR thing, because um, again, Valero deals with the whole preferred version versus uh, other versions. Um, and if you're restoring to a different uh, Kubernetes version than the backup was taken from, sometimes you have to do that version negotiation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I see uh, one thing uh, is that the OIDP state mover is putting the 
the the the uh, same kind of uh, uh, CR. I mean the some product, like the some product CR in the in the user's namespace. So yeah. uh, it it was be more convenient for for the for the IDP data mover to uh, to to treat it as a as a, a backup data and uh, at the, in the in the same yeah. way like the, uh, the the additional item. But actually, <laughs> uh, when we think about this, uh, it, I I don't think it's uh, it's a good behavior because. Uh, uh, because uh, we, we, we as a backup tool, uh, we we should avoid or modify anything uh, uh, in in the users uh, users workload uh, or namespace as part of as we can, right? So uh, I, it's it's like it's like that. It's better to put the data into the available uh, namespace or in a separate uh, namespace. Yeah, although, although that, I think that depends on your, your use case. I, I think those are both valid use cases. I think there are cases where, like you said, you don't want it in the user namespace, you want to put it in the Valero if possible. But there are certain things, that, and like I think snapshot backups have to be in the same namespace because Kubernetes requires that. Um, so that's you know with the CSI why, plugin. Why, why, uh, what is the reason? Uh, why does Kubernetes require uh, that? I, 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 I may be wrong uh, on that. He's talking about, about the CSI but, snapshot. Yeah, what is actually, actually, actually uh, for for the Valor building, uh, I mean the PUC we have uh, created a previous. Actually, we we uh, we also uh, face the same problem, and uh, and uh, uh, there are indeed some way we can move the uh, the, the 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 internal or uh, intermediate objects like the volume snapshot and or any PVC created from the snapshot into Valor namespace. And I, I think that's a, a, a good practice. And, and uh, last, but, uh, but uh, I, I think uh, uh, that's another thing. Let's set, uh, set aside of it. And uh, the things like uh, when we see the, uh, the whole things and, uh, and uh, when, we, when we see the whole things, uh, I think that uh, first of all, uh, we, Avoid put uh, first of all uh, uh, the the data uh, the how to say the final the data need to be finalizing that is uh, not ready uh, until the uh, the async operation is done uh, it's not uh, the data uh, we back up from the user space it's definitely some data created by Valero or created by the plugin. Right? right, that is the first thing. That is for backup. For resource, it's another story because uh, we don't, we don't, uh, we even don't uh, do not need to uh, proceed anything for resource. Uh, so I think the resource is not a story. So just for, for backup, and the, uh, that data is definitely created by Valero. And if that is created by Valero, why should we uh, just uh, 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 just a uh, uh, Call the the backup item again uh, for this kind of data because this kind of data has nothing to do with the backup uh, workflow, right? So, well, so it, I think it, 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 that that uh, again, I think that depends on um, again in the more general case because mm -hmm. this also has to support you know if if a user writes for example a custom uh, asynchronous plugin that does something other than data mover. Um, mm. Are we expecting that that user to create things in the Valero namespace, or are they expecting that user to create things in the in the application namespace? I I, I, I don't know, I, but actually, that... actually, uh, uh, yeah, say, yeah, uh, I think that's something we need to decide. I mean, do we consider it a very general use case that user will create additional resource? Uh, during the async operation, which I, have to be put into the backup turbo. Is that a very general or common use case, or is that really for the data mover only? If it's data mover only, I can think of a few workaround without having to write to backup turbo again. Yeah, well, 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 well and again, just just to be clear, when I say when when I say you know update the tarball, we're actually not. Trying to modify an existing tarball, we're actually creating a second tarball, um, but that's more of an implementation detail, I guess. Logically, you know, you're updating the backup. You know. um, but, yes. but for example, one asynchronous plugin that would make sense in, a, in an OpenShift context would be a plugin that, because um, right, right now we're doing this in a synchronous plugin, um, mm -hmm. and it, you know, it slows things down. Is that because um, OpenShift has an internal um, uh, Docker registry, and so one of the things that we want to do in backup is to 
copy those images, you know, to some to some backup registry. Um, and so that's an action that might take a while. Right now we're doing it in a regular backup item action, which slows backups down. Um, that's another thing that <laughs> okay. would be a good candidate yeah. for an asynchronous mm -hmm. um, plugin. So we would need to create a CR for that. Um, and again, that's that question, you know, does that go in the user namespace uh, or do we, does, does Valero say the official supported thing to do is that plugins that create things like this should go into the Valero namespace? Um, it seems to me that if it's especially if it's a custom plugin that's not, you know, in core Valero, um, you know, adding things to the Valero namespace might not be considered a good idea. For the uh, uh, plugin, uh, 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 I mean, the uh, I mean the plugin can do it. It's running, you know, as in the Valero pod, so it's not it's not a permissions issue, um, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I think that is another uh, issue we need to uh, uh, discuss and uh, further but, dig into that. But but, but uh, again, mm. and you you mentioned the CSI plugin is that you you know you're you're actually saying that, and that, I think that's out of the scope of this. But you know the, that the CSI plugin ought to be putting that in the Valero namespace and not in the work, user workload namespace. But since that's is not an asynchronous plugin, if we did that, then we would need to figure out a way to get that. Uh, and, and again, we actually mm. have. Um, and, and Shubham, again, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe that one of the way that we're doing the Red Hat Data Mover is that we actually have, uh, that, that that's actually a plugin written on volume snapshot, right? Not on um, PVC? Yes. So so the, the CSI plugin volume creates snapshot. the okay. volume snapshot as an additional item, which is stored in the user namespace. And because that goes mm. through the normal workflow, the, mm. um, the, yeah, the ADP, uh, actually, uh, uh, well, uh, 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 when we talk about this question, we we we, we say we have the user name space and we, we have Velaro name space. Actually, for the plugin data mover or plugin items, like uh, uh, we actually have another uh, the other uh, uh, name space like created by the by the by the by the plugin itself, right? So, well, uh, I think uh, first of all, we we uh, e, uh, as a backup tool. We don't. Uh, we should avoid put anything into the user name, uh, user's name space as possible as we can. And secondly, we can put it to, into Valero space. And uh, if it, uh, if there is any uh, problem for the plugin uh, uh, item to put it into the Valero space, we can create a new name space. Actually, uh, for the back for the uh, for the for the C, uh, CSI uh, case. And uh, I still I still think that we, we can put uh, create a, a volume snapshot object into the random space or another name space, uh, but outside of the user name space. Yeah, but 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 again, I think we maybe it still seems to me that even if it's in the Valera namespace, um, again, since since the purpose of the backup item um, function and the item backup is to take something in a cluster and to extract it to a tarball, um, whether yeah, that's a separate that, tarball that with a different the, name. Yeah, that is for the for the item to be backed up. All the right, I, I'm backup just saying data. that we 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 would have to if if you don't want to use that for this, then we would have to re-implement probably you know a good portion of that functionality again for this new special case, because um, basically the only thing is that um, in the finalized in the existing PR, um, mm. we're using that same because everything we're doing from backup item. Is something that we potentially need. Um, you know, we have to figure out the right um, GVR to use and, and deal with the preferred version stuff. Um, we got to stream it out to a tarball. And um, in the general case, even though the the data mover may not need it, um, the ability to call user plugins on everything we back up, um, you know, is something that's available. Uh, and that would be functionality that we'd be losing if we didn't use that. Um, mm. I, I, I'm just not. I'm. I'm having a hard time seeing a downside to this because to do a completely different workflow would be a lot more code to write, potentially more complicated. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, uh, so we have a lot of things that is not clear when we talk about some some future things so that it's hard to decide right now. That is uh, that is uh, that is uh, uh, one fact, and the other thing is like uh, uh, if uh, if we Mm, 
if we uh, don't have any, you know, block uh, blocking uh, issues, uh, I will suggest that we will, we will, we will take the simple uh, most uh, simplest way. That is, we found a way that just uh, good enough for the for the data more, uh, which is what will, will be the first user for the uh, of the I think operation uh, plugin. Uh, and uh, we use that simply a uh, way to implement uh, implement this PR, and then we discuss uh, further uh, in future for our future requirements. But that makes but, sense. But, it's just that from what I'm understanding is, you know, doing it the, as suggested in the PR, I think actually makes it. It's not. It's not any simpler than what we're currently doing. It might be more complicated, but it, but what we're doing now reuses more code that we already have. Um, so the additional I, code needed. Is, yeah, is I mean, I mean, uh, uh, guys, I, I think um, whether uh, calling the atom backupper again in this uh, finalizer controller, I think that's an implementation uh, detail. But we really we want to uh, uh, clarify the workflow whether we need to support uh, persisting uh, additional item that are only available after the async oper operation yeah. finishes. Uh -huh. I think that's a very important decision. And that's something uh, since we uh, we didn't consider when doing the yeah, yeah right. that, that makes sense. Um, so that, that's... Yeah, 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 that makes sense. I, I guess, I guess my, my thinking is that if you're gonna, either way you look at it, you're gonna have two tarballs. You, you have the original bite and back up and then you have a tarball with everything that was, um, you know, uh, written um, in the finalized phase. Um, the, yeah. So, so, so one of the differences between what this PR does and what you're proposing is that um, the mechanism you're proposing would completely skip persisting it um, the first time around, um, and it would be only in the second tarball. Um, so, one reason why you might want to go ahead and put it in the tarball anyway while you're going through everything is that if you have a scenario where you have a a huge back, you know, a huge number of Kubernetes resources in a backup but a small number of small volumes, by the time you finish that backup process, you might actually be done. Because the, the first, the, the last thing we do before we persist backup is we we call all of the backup, um, the asynchronous synchronous operations and get status. Because if some of those are already done at that point, you know, we don't have to call status on them later. If all of them are already done, the backup's complete. We don't have to go through uh, any, you know, th that that waiting two minutes to pull, you know, for for progress because we we make that first progress call before we persist the backup the first time. Um, so the one advantage of including those items in the backup itself is that if the only asynchronous actions you have run fairly quickly, especially if they happen early in the backup process, um, you may not need to do a second pass. You may already have everything. Um, so if you explicitly exclude that, um, you know, you're not really saving much time the first time around um, and you might be extending the backup. So th that, that, that's one difference. Um, another difference is whether these items processed um, that, that are created by the asynchronous actions are you know, run through the backup process, including plugins on them. So, and again, I, I bring up the CSI example just to show that because when you return additional items, there's, you know, there, there's async plugin, plugins and then like the CSI plugin is not an asynchronous plugin. It returns additional items, but it doesn't do anything after that. So it's, it's already obvious from our existing use cases that the volume snapshot returned by the CSI plugin, we have to be able to, that has to have plugins run on it because we have plugins registered for it that, we're, that we rely on in OADP. Um, so the fact that additional items returned from regular plugins get plugins run on them is essential. Um, so one advantage from a simplifying point of view of the way that we've written the, the async plugin so far is we use that existing additional items infrastructure to get things added to the backup. So there's no new code needed to add those things to the backup because we already have the additional items infrastructure. The only change that, that I've added is I've added another Boolean to say update additional items. So when we when the finalized runs, 
it goes through all of those asynchronous actions, um, the, the, the operations. And for any of those operations that has that set, we have a list of items that came from that, from that additional items list and we update those. So this allows us to mm -hmm. use a lot of existing infrastructure without having to start over um, with it. Um, so, so I guess one question I have is that, and again, this also means on the restore side, um, everything is in the same place, whether it came from finalized or from the first pass. So once you've persisted that into the, uh, rather when, once you've created that temp directory and extracted the, the tarballs from that point forward, everything is created similarly. You know, the, you, you can set your priority pr appropriately so that if you need, you know, if you're, if, if the things that are relating to your plugin need to be restored first, that can be in the restore priority. If they need to be restored later, that can be later in the priority. Um, depending on the depending on your plugin and what your items are, um, you know, I could see that that making a difference. Um, so all of that, you know, reuses as much of the existing infrastructure as we can. So really, the only new thing we need to do is is create that um, finalize, which just iterates over uh, and again. Um, we're able to use most of the existing infrastructure around because we have an item. The, the item collector also kind of figures out all the, the appropriate um, um, versions of the resources to, to create. So um, there's an I added a new method item collector that goes through that, but instead of um, grabbing the, all the items, it grabs them from that finalized mm -hmm. list. Yep. But it puts them in that uh, same structure around the GVRs, and so you get the right preferred versions and all that. Because again, we need to support restoring to a different cluster version as the backup, which means that preferred version stuff is important. Uh, yeah, I, actually, uh, this uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, the current problem uh, we have a very simple way uh, to solve. Uh, we we, we uh, we don't need to, uh, if we uh, if we say that we want to keep the current code and we don't want to make much uh, uh, changes, uh, uh, we, we don't need to change uh, anything actually. We just uh, need to find a way that uh, the current uh, some uh, some 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 CRs uh, in the in the in the finalizing case, uh, phase uh, belong to this uh, async operation, and we find that CR. And we proceed that CR. That is the most is um, the simplest way. And we have multiple ways to find that CRs. And, uh, uh, and if we cannot uh, make clear for all the things or all the pictures, we, we just uh, I, I suggest that we just take the current way. And, and, and that it, uh, even uh, doesn't impact the current situation that OIDP data mover is using the I think uh, the, the I think item. Uh, re additional item return the execute the method uh, uh, that even doesn't uh, impact that because uh, uh, if uh, if OIDP data more want to keep the uh, want to keep the current behavior it can continue use uh, the uh, uh, continue use uh, uh, the, the additional item we just want to add one more uh thing one more uh, mechanism in the in the i think operation finalize uh, a controller or finalize uh, a model or something like that and and we find the crs and we proceed that well see that's it that mm. but that's actually what the finalize does now it's just that when you say and persist that um mm. the 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 easiest way to persist something right now is to rather than write something from this from scratch that does everything we need um you know i made a modification to um to backup item that will persist that um handling the, the the gvr preferred version stuff and getting into the right file and generating the tarball all that's already handled in the existing um api but, um, but i actually, think yeah. handling the gvr or something that's required for restoring are you going to create and the CR on the target class or a target name space well, 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 well that, the that's restore? the advantage of using the, the um and, and again we're, we're not going through the backup workflow we're using the backup item function which is also used by the backup workflow because this already handles um you know you you, you pass in a tar writer um you use the item collector to figure out the 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 set of gvrs that you're working with um 
And so that backup item already goes in there. And if it's the preferred version, it writes it out to this directory. And if it's not, it writes it out using the version. And so all that is already handled by backup item. It does all that negotiation. Restore logic I, I, uses I, that. Yeah, I think I understand your point, Scott. But, but I think the way we need to figure out is that, uh, for example, do we want this async additional item to go through all the uh, backup item action well, plugins? Um, I, I, well, see, see that, see. If, if, if we you, treat if that as a, oh, sorry, sorry, let, let me yep. continue. So if we treat that as an item we want to put in the backup, we right. should treat them as the same workflow as all the resources in users' workflow. Yeah. And, and, that, and but, that's, but if you do that, there will be a recursive way. For example, oh. you, you return additional item oh, in the no, that, async that's, operation. That, that yeah, would trigger another I, async. Yeah, you know, that, that was a concern. That That's why, if you look at the, um, that, that's why I pass in that finalized Boolean because we go through, we, we call back up item, but when finalized calls it, it passes in the finalized Boolean. And so it skips things that are not relevant because we, we, we basically want a streamlined version of backup item um, that calls the backup item actions, but doesn't add more additional items because we don't, we don't need any additional items at this point. We've already gone through, we already know what our items are. We just say, I already but, know what but, this item but, is. We already backed it up once, but it's updated. I want this version. So we discard additional items. We discard, you know, anything relating to async. We're just calling the plug because the thing is that what most plugins do, the async plugins are kind of an exception. What most plugins do is they modify the YAML. You know, you, you get a backup in, you add an annotation, you remove an annotation, you you set a field, you clear a field. Um, you know, you might have some requirement that says, hey, this field has to be removed because the cluster added it. Yeah. And so because finalize mm -hmm. discards additional items and anything like that, um, we call the plugins to get the modifications to the um, to the resources, um, oh. if there are any. And, you know, in most cases, I mean, in the case of the snapshot backup, you're probably not going to have any plugins that run on it. So when, when, you, when you iterate over the actions, it'll be an empty list. Um, but for some custom plugin, mm -hmm. a user might create, um, like the OADP, I was talking to, to Shubham about this, you know, right now we don't have this, but, you know, we could imagine the OADP data mover itself, um, you know, having some backup item action on this um, data mover backup, which might add some other field. Um, so when uh, we finalize that, we want that field there. Otherwise, the otherwise the finalized version is going to remove something that was there in the original one, and so you end up with this uh, situation where um, if the backup finishes early, um, you know you have it there, but if it takes longer, you lose it. Um, and, and again, well, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah uh, one question, Scott. So uh, when you talk about uh, uh, the, the uh, I think uh, plugin want to uh, modify some field, it means that uh, it means that uh, modify to the to the to the objects uh, backup. Uh, I mean the oh. the objects in the user's namespace, like oh no, no 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 not the async plugin. What I mean is, so the async plugin is probably going to be a plugin on you know for for example a plugin on PVC or on PV that creates this um, data mover backup. But I'm saying you might have a plugin on data mover backup. Now, not, and that, that would not be an async plugin. That would just be a normal plugin that might modify something in that field. Um, you know, or, or again, another example would be um, maybe, maybe a user has some audit plugin that runs on everything that goes into backup that, you know, that, that records some data they need. Um, that would run on all these things that would add that annotation or whatever. Um, and you know, and, and and in most cases, these plugins are probably not going to exist. Or if they do, that they won't be doing much. But you know, the infrastructure is there, um, so that way, you know, this is one of these cases where I think, since we're already using backup item, you know, anyway, um, we support it. If you if you rip that out, yeah. then you have to document that you know certain that, that these are exceptions to plugins and they don't work here, which, which we could do. I mean, I, I don't know that we have any essential use cases that require these plugins, um, but again, we might be breaking edge cases for some users. But I think the more important yeah. reason to use backup item is this handles the, the, the version negotiation and, and preferred version and the streaming and all of that. Um, and it allows the restore side 
to not care whether it came from finalized or from um, the original backup. Yeah, actually, uh, so uh, if uh, if the uh, uh, if all the things, are, I mean, the modification can be decided or done uh, very quickly, and uh, uh, so in the current workflow or the backup, everything is uh, everything is fine. But uh, if we have that uh, in the in the in the long running async operation, that yeah. uh, there will be a problem because we will do everything. I mean, uh, just as we mentioned, the recursive thing, everything uh, again at the finalized case. Well, what's recursive here? I'm not sure I understand that. Uh, because uh, uh, I mean, the, the current backup item action are just uh, in the behavior, re re recursive behavior. It's call one, uh, call one backup item action and it return additional items and uh, call oh, that. Oh, uh, I see what you're saying. No, no that, that, that's why additional items were explicitly mm -hmm. um, uh, one of the things that if you look in my PR where, where I pass in that new uh, finalized field is that if you if you call backup item with finalized that true, then we ignore, we, we discard uh, additional items um, to avoid that recursive problem. Because yeah, but, I, but, I thought but, about the but, recursive problem but, and I realized but, that was an issue. But but don't you think that make the workflow even more confusing if we skip all these additional? I, mean, I, I don't think so because I think there's, 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 there's a regular way of running it. And, and then when you run it on finalize, you know, you say, okay, this is final step. So we skip certain steps. So uh, I think that's less mm -hmm. confusing than creating a whole, I mean, because the other, the other option would be to create a whole new call stack that instead of calling backup yeah. item, we call finalize yeah. item and then finalize item, copies and pastes all the code. Because because basically backup item, you know, just to make up some numbers to make it an example, you know, say backup item has, you know, 300 lines of code in it and we need 150 of those. So you can either add that flag and, 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 and exclude certain things along the way, or you can copy and paste 150 lines of code. And then anytime you have a bug, you know, persisting relating to tarball creation, for example, you have two places to put it in. And, and that's going to be a lot, I think that's going to be a lot more error prone and harder to maintain. Whereas if yeah, we but, just have a yeah, notion but, of backing up an item with certain exclusions. Yeah, but that, but again, I think that's how we implement that. But first we need to, you know, reach consensus in regards to the workflow. So do we want to support async operation uh, returning additional item or not? Originally, I, I, my answer was no, but I, I didn't realize there was a requirement for this yeah. well, at the I, moment I, I reviewed re Since the async design. operations are backup item actions, and some, since the existing V1 API for backup item actions allows additional items to be returned, um, mm -hmm. I, I think it would be a lot more confusing if you say, okay, you know, again, we can, you can return additional items, but those are, you know, if because you, if, you, if you don't do that, then you have to create two ways of, because you have additional items, which is you know the standard way of just saying, hey, include this in the backup. Um, for mm -hmm. async, right now, that still applies. We say, oh, include this in the backup. But I added another Boolean that says, update additional items. And if that's set to true, that means finalize cares about those items. Um, so that, that, that allows us to reuse the existing API for additional items. Um, the alternative yeah. would be to create a, a whole a brand new field that, that is, you know, async additional items. And then you have to make those decisions about do you include them in the backup the first time around or not? And if you don't. Um, but you have you to know, do actually, that in the, but you have to do that in the async operation. You cannot do it before the async was kicked off. When you say the async operation, do you, do you mean the plugin or do you mean, because the, the, because the, because the async operation plugin, it, 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 basically, we just have a backup item action plugin. And the difference mm -hmm. from, from Valero's point of view, the difference between an async plugin and a regular plugin is the async plugin returns an operation ID. The regular plugin, that field is, is empty. So, yes. So the, in the, when, we, when we do the backup um, and, and, and we're calling backup item the first time on the item that triggers the async operation, that execute in the plugin creates that CR passes uh -huh. that CR back as an additional item in this PR, um, passes an operation ID that references the operation. Uh, and if you need this to be updated in the final tarball from finalize, there's a Boolean that says update additional items uh, on finalize. So, so then we need to call the, the entire back, I mean, call back to the to the backup or uh, to handle the additional item after the finalized case, right? Oh, oh well, well, no, no, the, 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 
so in the original case, so, so we're, we're not finalized yet. So, so, so that additional item is passed back along with the operation ID. Um, in the first run through, you know, it's, it's a backup item action. So any, anything in additional items, you know, in the backup workflow, you know, we call the backup run. Um, so um, that's, you know, so CSI plugin creates a volume snapshot. We then call backup item on the volume snapshot. Um, if, you know, you have a plugin that, that pulls in, uh, um, you know, some other cluster scope resource. So, so the, the additional items is regular backup workflow. That's how we pull it in the first time. Um, but that additional Boolean that, that, that we pass back that says update on an additional item, that tells Valero, because we also were creating this map or this list of all of the um, asynchronous uh, operations that we need to check on, check status on. That map will list those additional items if we have the update uh, on, on finalized flag set to true. So when you finalize, um, we now have a very limited workflow. We basically want to just create a tarball with those items only in it, those items that are listed you know, in that oper operations list. We're not, we're not refreshing the items that started the backup, you know, the, the, um, the asynchronous uh, actions. So, so we're not, we're not re rerunning backup item on the item on those oper uh, items that have a uh, backup, uh, sorry, have an async plugin. We're, we're running those additional items. So, you know, in other words, we're calling backup item on the snapshot backup or the, the data mover backup, not on the PVC or the um, volume snapshot or, or, you know, whatever plugin that has the async. So, those, so these aren't async plugins at this point, if you, if you run plugins. Um, we're just calling backup item on those things that were modified by the async operations mm -hmm. that need their mm -hmm. final status um, and annotations and whatever else persisted. Yeah, but uh, that that is uh, that is for the for the for the uh, different kind of data or different kind of item. But uh, in the code implementation, we must have but, another. But I think code. I think the the scenario Scott mentioned Yonghui. It's also possible in the async operation to modify the item to be backed up. So that's essentially a delay of uploading the backup tarball, right? Um, well, I mean, well, it's, um, mm -hmm. what, what it is again in this PR is that we we, we upload the tarball at the same originally just the same time as now, uh -huh. but we have a list of the list of all the items that are, that are, that, are, that we need to monitor that you know that 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 could be updated. So. So, you know, in the data mover case, these would be data, data mover backups. Um, you know, in a custom user case, these would be, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever additional items that you returned that you expect the asynchronous operation to modify, those are the things that you're looking at on finalize. So when you call finalize, you take that list from the operation list and, and say, okay, this list of data mover backups or snapshot backups or some custom image backups, whatever those items are, we want to back up just those items create a smaller tarball with just those items, upload those mm. to, to object store. Um, and yeah. Yeah. and mm. I'm using the same file name. And that's, that's another advantage of using backup item is that you guarantee that the file names used are the same, including because those, again, those file names include the, um, the resource version uh, in them um, uh, and for it to handle all the, all the, the version negotiating stuff and stuff. So that second tarball uses all the same file names as the first, which means when we extract them on restore, we extract them in order, which means the updated version overwrites the original version. So it's equivalent on restore to a backup that finished everything in the first pass and didn't need to run finalize. Mm. Uh, yes, I think here we have, uh, you know, it's hard to decide that the question is uh, we have some big visions and we have uh, the, the thing, uh, the, 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 the user or the, the data more case that to be the user of the backup uh, async operation. Uh, I think actually if we only talk about the data more and uh, uh, the, the, there is nothing need to be updated. Or, or no object yeah. to be updated up, after you know uh, the async yeah. operation is launched. That is the first uh, uh, okay. reality. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although when we say users, we, we need to think about the data mover that we're building for Valero in one twelve, but also the ODB data mover that we're building on top of one eleven. 
Um, and I think Shubham, you said that we do need to have that updated during the finalized case because there's there are annotations that we're saving on those that we need on restore, right? Uh, yeah, currently we have some data on status that oh, gets updated so by the external controller and we put that as annotations and then this data is used during the restore workflow. So the so, annotation is added to the CR or added to the PVC? Or, or uh, to the CR. Yeah, added to the data more backup CR. If so, that's for the data mover only, there's a workaround. For example, um, we can label it in some way so that the the controller when the async operation finishes we store everything related to data mover in a tarball and the, you, you can use them as a reference during the restore okay i, I mean a, a label would just be a different uh, it's true you, you could do it with a but, label but, um, but I, I, again i think we we need to decide whether this is a really common use case we want to support uh, in the async uh, when we introduce this async mechanism I think that's the uh, more important uh, thing we need to decide uh, right now, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I would say that if it's a use case required by the first implementation of it, that I think that counts as a common use case because it's, you know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's essentially one of two, we only have two concrete use cases right now. So if one of those mm -hmm. two needs it, I think that's one we have to handle. And okay. uh, gives you an op op optional Boolean, right? You don't have so, to so right so so line. right now yeah. what we're doing yeah I mean the 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 plugin itself can decide whether it needs that so if if the if the if the asynchronous if, if the thing that the async plugin creates and, and then we monitor if that's not needed on restore if that if whatever is in that Kubernetes object is not needed by Valera to restore it then the boolean is you know false by default and so we don't update that on finalize. Uh, and so we're, we're good. This is just an optional way. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think Dan, you, you were saying, you know, one option to do this is a work on is that we could create a, you could create a label that you tell plugins, hey, you have to use this label. Um, and then the finalized would just look for the label. Um, I actually think building into the API is probably safer because then we have this Boolean to say, hey, just look at the additional items. Those are the things we need. Um, and then the plugin, um, instead of labeling an item, it returns it as an additional item and sets true on it. Um, so if you do that, um, uh, I mean, if we do work. that, yeah, I mean, if we do that, treat it as same as the uh, additional items, we should, you know, we should handle handle them the same way as the additional this the current sync additional item by return by BIAV1. We should treat these async additional items same way as the- Right, right, yeah, yeah. We yeah. Well, we, yeah. we do, yes, and, and, and so if that if that Boolean is false, then it's identical to it. We don't even look at it, you know, which means we, we save it, it's in the bus driver, we don't look at it again. Um, the, the API change for V2 is that we have this update additional items field. If it's true that we, while we initially treat it identical as V1 additional items, we also, update that item by creating a second tarball, including it at the end, yeah. because the plugin uh, says, hey, I need this final stat status. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that come down to the I'm not, uh, to the to the, uh, the question I mentioned in the comment that uh, for the even for I, I think operation, uh, that's the I think items returned by the acute method uh, in the in the in the finalized case uh, of as as long as it's returned by the execute or uh, it uh, it is not in the finalized case until uh, the, the until uh, uh, the 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 operation go to the fi finalizing phase. Uh, so if we don't uh, if we have a user case that we require uh, to modify the the the, the items returned by the execute method uh, during the op I think operation that is one mm -hmm. case. If not, mm -hmm. we don't need to care about that because uh, because uh, we we still we can still allow the additional items returned by the execute, but uh, we just uh, risk risk make one rest restriction that that item can be persisted by the backup without backup immediately without waiting for the finalizing uh, phase of the yeah. Essentially, you want to delay uploading the backup tarball in your use case, Scott. I think. Well, well, I, right. no, I, I. I I, I think delaying the tarball doesn't solve the problem um, because the 
The issue is that we still, so additional items have to go through the regular process so they get inserted into the tarball. Even if you delay uploading the tarball, um, because the, the, the tarball contents are generated item by item by streaming to that tar writer. Um, so mm -hmm. once you get to finalize, you either have to create a second tarball or you have to re, you know, rec recreate that by re reading through the tar writer again. So, so I, you still have the problem of, you know, you create a second tarball versus the first. So I think, there, I think there's delaying writing the tarball, I think is a bad thing because that, that makes the existing Valero problem of Valero crashes break backups worse. Because right now, but but that additional but, 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 I mean, the, yeah, yeah. Even yeah. I mean, the working working in progress backup is incomplete. There's some async has important modification need to make to the backup tarball. So there's, I think no, no, whether see, see, whether once, Valero once you pass crashes, the end, Valero can recover from that with 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 this implementation. So if if, if the backup is complete and we're just waiting on plugin operations. Um, you know, the, 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 this How run in, in, a, in, a, in a separate controller. Um, if the Valero in separate pod, if the Valero pod crashes and restarts, so if it crashes in, in progress, then you lose the backup. If we're just waiting for plugin operations and the Valero pod crashes, and those operations are happening in a, set, in a, in a completely different application, yeah, pod, actually, then actually, we uh, recover completely. But yeah, yeah, actually, we don't need to uh, uh, delay uh, persisting all the data, all the backup data. We just yep. want to delay uh, persisting the uh, the data uh, I, uh, additional item returned by the but, uh, specific. Sure, but, but again, uh, there, there, there's no downside to just including it anyway the first time. Um, that mm -hmm. way, it, 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 because the effect of, in other words, if you have two tarballs and the updated item is in both tarballs, Versus you have two tarballs and the update item yeah. is not in the first tarball. The end uh, result is identical. Yeah, I think there's a lot of detail we need to figure out. I don't think we can clarify all of them in this meeting. And by the way, it's already midnight in Beijing. I don't <laughs> really uh, figure those out uh, at this moment. But I, I have one last comment. If we wanna, if we, if there's an async operation and we somehow we know that we need to modify the backup tarball in the finalization phase yeah. to make that tarball uh, explicitly look temporary. So we know that this is incomplete. There's some ongoing well, well, change we, to that. We know that because the backup state's not, um, you know, as long as the backup- but No, no, I mean, I mean, I, I, by looking at the tarball or by looking at the bucket, I, I hope that that's, it well, well, see, see that, that, but that's that's the purpose of the of the um, because because remember we upload the backup metadata too. The backup phase um is is the is the key there to tell you that a backup's complete or not. Mm, yeah, um, yeah. And in fact, we don't because of that. The backup sync controller does not. You know, we don't sync backups um, with this PR until they're at a terminal phase. So if you have a second cluster that shares your backup storage location that cluster will not pull down this backup um, until it, it is um, in the completed phase. So, 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 so I, I don't think you need to, the tarball needs to be different um, because again, the, 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 other, the other point is that um, we're only gonna upload a, upload a second tarball if there are operations that are incomplete uh, at the end of the first back, uh, at the end of yeah. back processing and those operations have Indicated to Valero with that with that Boolean field that they need to be updated. Yeah, actually, if we think like this, we don't put persist in the same backup table. We will not uh, to split the backup table, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, I mean, everything will look uh, quite simple uh, if uh, if the finalized phase just update another table. Right? Oh, it, it, it does. No, it, I it, think it, it for, does for the um, but, yeah. but but again, I actually think that adds complexity to skip right. those. I think I think the original backup should use the existing backup workflow and backup everything. Um, the fact that we're going to be updating it later um, and finalized with a new tarball is not something that the backup controller needs to worry about um, because that adds complexity to the backup right. controller to add yeah. more. Right, 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 right. Because because I I think Yonghui essentially um, what Scott wants is need to make modification to the backup tarball after the async operation finishes that's the workflow right. he's right 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 but but we're not we're not literally modifying a tarball we're actually creating a new tarball kind of as an incremental you know you can think of that tarball as an incremental backup 
there's updates at the end to get those changes that we need. Um, but because, eventually, there's only one backup tarball, so it right. looks the same. Well, well, well no, I mean, time. there are two physical tarballs um, because um, it, you know, you, you have to one. So, so if, if that's the way, I, I don't think that will work, Scott, really. I think if we want one, that there should be one. Okay, uh, uh, let, yeah. me, let me see. See, one, one would be a lot, more, a lot more effort because then you'd have to go in you have to go in and, and and like restream the thing because the way the way it went because the backup item streams to the tar writer well, file by file yeah so yeah well, you we can somehow that once well, but but, but somehow we can we can download this already the existing tarball and combine the data and oh, you can. the new um, one but yeah, that I would think... be a lot less efficient and uh, i think it would be again that that would be no, a lot I, I think i think i i i'm more I, I think we should concern more about the consistency of data. We, we don't want, there's a lot of, you know, ambiguous and data well, in but, the bucket. But there's no ambiguity here because uh, it, it's like, it's like RESTIC, you know, a Re RESTIC when you do a backup, it's incremental. Internally, RESTIC has, you know, it, it has the first uh, snapshot and the second one's incremental. On top of that, same with, you know, all these snapshots are all, you know, incremental. Um, logically, you know, mm. we, I mean, Physically, we have two tarballs, and, and and but the API, you know, pulls the first one, and pulls the second one, and and um, we may eventually need to do that anyway um, to support, um, you know, Valero being more resilient to, yeah. to, to, to crash. No, so, I, I think if 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 editing the tarball is what we essentially want, we should do that. I mean, not literally editing, but we should somehow modify the tarball one way or another. Well, not I, physically again, the tarball, but we should modify the. The actual uh, physical yeah. tarball because I think that's inefficient. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, but but at the end there should be only one tarball. Otherwise, well, there's that's a what I, mean. I, think, tarball. I think that's that's inefficient because that that requires you to stream the entire tarball again, um, and then regenerate a new tarball because and, and that'll also because I, I actually started doing it that way. That's going to require a lot more changes to backup item because um, we're going to have to pass things in in the middle like pass file names because. Um, remember, backup item might create two files for the tarball, um, one for the preferred version and one for the regular. So we're going to have to turn those file names back instead of streaming them and then go back through that. That's going to add a ton of complexity that's not there here if we did that. Yeah. Uh, regarding to the to the, uh, to the the tarball, uh, I think uh, uh, my suggestion is just uh, we do it like the current uh, pod volume backup or volume sum uh, uh, where we just add another uh, uh, JS uh, another tar file in the uh, uh, along with uh, the uh, the backup uh, table. Well, if we do why, it why that way, it? if we do it that way, the, that that another file need to be very uh, use case specific, just like pod volumes. But here, let me let me give that are types that Valerio may not know about. Yeah, um, let, let me uh, let me give one example. But forgive me if I if I make things too far. It's just like uh, we we uh, we have all the backup data. I mean, the cumulative objects uh, need to backup in the backup table. And uh, now we have another uh, we have another uh, uh, asynchronous operation that will uh, uh, persist something later when uh, when this async operation finishes after, for example, four hours. And the uh, and the and the users. Uh, uh, in future, we may have the immutability, uh, immutability of the repo, and the user will uh, prefer that uh, their their data can be uh, uh, immutable uh, as soon as possible. So that uh, so for that kind of backup data, I mean the cumulative object that we can uh, immute immute uh, make them immutable as soon as uh, very quickly as soon as the execute execute method returns. But if, and. Uh, for for the other part, we we can wait until the uh, the async operation go to the finalized case finalized phase, but uh, it's okay. Only that is only for the async operation data, and for the backup data, we still uh, um, could meet user's requirement. And uh, so we uh, we. But uh, but well, I think Scott yeah. Scott won the like the RIA plugins also handle the that. Uh, the the resources in the new tarball, right? So 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 that so that that is I guess the advantage in my mind of, of e even though it's a separate tarball of of extracting it together is that way the once you once the restore workflow extracts the tarball we don't have to make other workflow changes on the restore side because but, um, but in the restore you need to combine the data. Its, 
Right, right. You need to combine the data because the data and, may be conflict, right? There may be a modification, mm -hmm. not only additional items. Uh, and, and, right, because the no. right. So, and the, the, and again, the advantage there is um, even not even this question of combining the data, but if if we if we're able to extract to the same place because we've generated the tarballs in the same way, um, then there's only one. You know, if you know the resource, you know, because because we have the the, the utility code to be able to find a file, you know, based on its, you know, because you know that once you extract that, there's the there's the traversing code to say, okay, you know, here's the namespace and here's the resource type, and and so we have all that code for traversing uh, an extracted archive. So if we extract these additional items into the same directory structure um, as the original, then restore doesn't care whether it came from uh, async item. Or a regular item, mm. it looks the same. Yeah. The same parsing, so, so, the same restoring. So, so uh, Scott, I, I don't think we can really reach consensus in this meeting. But I think if we knew, need to do the combine, we do the combine at the backup time so that we have one backup parallel. That's my I think that, to, to me, that's an implementation detail. We we can even change that after this PR. Um, and then then and then also that'll give us an advantage to see here's how much actually work it is because it's a separate thing. Because um, I, 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 I think. Well, I think that's a design decision sorry because yeah, I, I, I just I, think that it's going to slow things down and make things less efficient and, and, and i don't really see any advantages to doing that because um you know it's the end result is the same you know it's it, it, we're treating this as um second tarball as an incremental backup rather than as a you know as another, another full backup so we don't have to stream the entire thing you know twice to the backup storage location because i know that was a concern with some of the but, updates before um i don't think we can reach agreement here but but yeah i i'm still not quite convinced uh i mean if we need to do that first i don't i i didn't realize that we need need to handle additional item that is generated only in the async operation that's not something covered in the design originally but now we need to handle that i i think we, we need to be careful here uh um instead of rush to Get things work. Oh, I agree. I, I, yeah, that, I, right? I think so. I, I, but I, yeah. I, just, I, I guess I, I just think that going through and restreaming and regenerating the, the tarball is a bunch of effort that I don't think gains us any advantage. But um, that, 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 I, I think from a high level, that will limit the change in the backup flow, workflow, and the restore workflow is not impacted by this. That's how I, why I, I actually think it'll. It, the thing is that streaming it actually will will, will 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 add a lot of change to the backup workflow because uh, by, yes, by having but, to restream it, it means I'm going to have to modify backup item um, to to return those file names so that I can because basically what 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 we would have to do to restream is um, you would need to open the original tarball um, streamer, read through file by file for each file, look at your finalized list to see do I have a new version of this file. If I do stream the new version of the file, otherwise stream the old file, move on to the next file. So we have to um, generate some additional metadata um, in the finalized workflow uh, in back okay, item. So, um, yeah, yeah, but, but I, I think we can take this discussion offline. I, I have some different, yeah, uh, I don't think we can reach agreement here at this moment right now. Yeah. But just think uh, through yeah. that because again, yep. that's yep. gonna that's that's gonna I think that's gonna add quite a bit of complexity to the workflow side on the backup, and you're not really gonna save much on the restore side, because the, the, right now with two tarballs, restore side changes are are limited to basically the extract method needs to take in a, a slice instead of a single file. But, that's the only change but, that was required but, on the restore but, side. No, but in restore side, you also need to do the comparison and somehow combine. No, no, no you don't. You just, you just have to extract your tarballs because w w w when you extract, because you, you extract them in order. So you extract the first tarball and then you go through the second tarball. And we assume that everything in the second tarball takes priority. Um, and so we just extract it. Um, there's no additional logic needed other than extract one and then extract two. So all that comparison is going to be on the backup portflow side. Um, if we have to um, go through and re regenerate the tarball, that's where we have to do a lot of comparison. Because yeah. Golang is very inflexible in the way they, the way, the, once you created the tarball, 
you essentially have to open it as another you know reader and just go through it and you know read file by file um, you know, and and that stream and then look at the file name you know you, you read the header you check the file name um, and then if, if if it's not one that's updated then you read that file and stream that to the second tarball and if the header is a file that matches the list you generated for all the things that need updates um, then you would stream out the new file and 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 um, discard the first one so I mean it's it, it's not exactly hard to write the code to do that but it's going to be a lot of processing and um, it's going to add more to the workflow in that backup item where we're having to make finalize you know differences to finalize because we're having to in the finalized case store these file names um, and, and well, yeah so store the file name and the, and the, the byte streams so, so the, the the byte slices um, that we need to stream out but don't actually stream them yet and then at the end of processing all those backups um, we have to open the the original tarball and replace those files in it by creating a new tarball so i mean that, that's all that's all doable um but I, I don't know that it's the end result actually helps us much I mean, I mean that was actually i started doing that that was that was my first approach i started writing that code and then i realized mm -hmm. it was a big mess uh, and, and and i and i decided mm -hmm. that that i think that i thought that it was cleaner to just add a second kind of incremental tarball on top of that i see i can go yeah. back and, and and go back down that path i mean again i, I already thought through how i would do it I just decided that I didn't think that was a good idea. So that's why I didn't follow through with it. Okay. Mm. Yeah, Folks, um, um, we're 25 minutes over the hour. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt that. It's a super interesting discussion, but uh, I'm not sure if it's very productive right now. Maybe we can schedule some, right. something, yeah. something, something else like purely for that discussion. Uh, what do you think? Just yeah, yeah. I, I think we, we, we should you know, yeah, pass this topic and uh, move on and uh, we, we can yeah. discuss it, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, I don't I don't want to interrupt the flow and the whole discussion, but it's like, yeah, obviously it's not going to be decided now. So uh, we have a few other topics to discuss. Um, so we, if we can squeeze it out in like the next 10 to 15 minutes, <laughs> would be super cool. Uh, so everyone can have their uh, time back. I'm sorry for that. Um, so Anshu, can you brief us on your two topics, please? Sure. So, so the first us. one is a design proposal I kind of brought up in the previous community meeting as well. I got few reviews from Scott and Shubham. Uh, so like firstly, calling out to the community, if anyone like gets a chance, please go and review this proposal. It's in a final shape now. We reviewed various approaches and kind of closed on a final approach for it. And uh, like requesting the community to further review and uh, further requesting Scott and Shubham to give any more comments, any any further discussion, uh, which which we were already having, so that we can try to close this uh, as soon as possible. Uh, but so, yeah, but this... that one, uh, by the way, uh, as for the implementation, I, I don't think that will go into one day eleven. You're okay with that, right? I think. Yeah, that is that is fair. If if it's going in one month, uh, the the next release, uh, that should be fair. But I mean, from my end, I'll try to raise it as quick as possible. But it's okay if you don't cherry pick it in 1.1 month. You can. Oh, okay. yeah, fine. So 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 if we if this one doesn't need to go into one diagram, I think the review may be delayed a little bit. Are you? Are no. You so the design that? at least should go into 1.11. That's that's at least what I hope for. At okay, least this okay. design okay. should be checked in by then. Uh, that's okay. the bare minimum I'm expecting. So. I would just I'll say, take a, I, I, I think it makes sense to get the design approved by, by the time we release 111. I, I don't know that the 111 feature complete date is relevant here because it's not code that's being shipped. Um, so right, it, right. I, I guess that, that's the only point I think Dan was making is that you know, we have some fairly big decisions that as we were just discussing that we need to kind of work out and yeah. finish in the next three weeks. And that's kind of the priority right now. We still need to look at this obviously, um, but you know, right now we're trying to not have to push the date back any, dates back anymore for 111. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, and your next yeah, one. The, 
Yeah, the second one is a new proposal that I've just started. Uh, so basically, this is for uh, so as of today in Velero, we have a bunch of plugins which do certain substitutions. For example, we have a storage class mapping plugin. We uh, there was a new PR which also brought in an image mapping plugin where you say change this image from the current one to a from a test to a dev kind of scenario. So what basically what I'm realizing is we have we are having plugins for each specific use case for let's say storage class uh, images and whatnot, right? So this is a proposal to basically introduce a more generic way of changing things in the YAMLs, like whatever you, in the, the YAMLs that you have uh, in the, what has been backed up during restore so that all these modifications are easier to do and like user-friendly in some sense. And we don't end up creating hundreds of plugins for each specific scenario that each user comes up with. So no one has uh, got a, reviewed it. I recently raised it. So again, requesting the community to please go through this PR and please share your feedback uh, on this. Uh, yeah. 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 I'll, I'll do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, my topics are irrelevant to this time. Uh, Daniel, I think we. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Some... I wanna. Yeah, I think <laughs> the first one I have already touched, and the second one is regarding Ming's uh, PR about the uh, resource filter. Uh, do we have any uh, outstanding comments, or maybe we we can go offline and check your ones like. If everyone is okay, I think we are gonna. Probably I, I want to push the we merge this one so that we can have the end-to-end -end flow work delivered in 1.11 before FC. Um, so please, uh, I know we've had a lot of uh, good discussion with Ivan and some other folks on the GitHub. So Scott Shuban, if you have time, please take a look. If there's oh. no uh, additional comments, I think probably uh, we, we try to merge this one uh, in this week. The 5773, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Also, Thanks. Uh, post it in, in Slack so not to forget. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, that was a super quick end. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, anyone else uh, who wants to? I think we have some new folks on the call. Uh, do you want to share some, some, something about you? I I can see Matthew for first time. Yeah, um, I'm working for Red Hat. I'm just getting started with Bolero stuff, so just interested to hear whatever you're talking about right now. Welcome, welcome to the club. Thanks. And uh, I think we have Young Kwan, but I'm. Pretty bad with with names. So, do you want to uh, introduce yeah. yourself? Actually, I already an old customer in Valero. I joined you around three years already. <laughs> okay, yeah. so I'm sorry if I see uh, you first uh, time. Previously, always on the China towns. I mean. Uh... Ah, yeah. Okay, that explains why I see you uh, first time here. All right, I'm sorry for that. Okay, uh, I think we're right on time, like half an hour later, but that that's cool. Um. For the last, uh, the last thing, uh, folks like Scott and Daniel, do you want me to schedule something to discuss the um, uh, backup item action stuff, or you you do that between you, both you or yeah, yeah, I think we'll talk all, uh, offline on Slack, and if needed, we can uh, schedule a, a, a Zoom meeting. Uh, yeah, and, and hopefully. Maybe even back and forth on the on the PR. I don't know if it makes sense to talk Slack or PR at this point, but um, we can figure that out, I guess. Okay, cool. And two two things from my side. Uh, if someone is going to join KubeCon in Amsterdam in April, please drop me a line so I can I can know and I, we know the number. We're planning some stuff with Wes, uh, so we can have the number and, and we can plan accordingly. And my second thing is I'm going to approach you. Uh, maybe over mail or Slack, whatever. Uh, we want to write a blog about Valero and how the different companies that are in the community, like Red Hat, Dell, Microsoft, whoever, are based their products or their services on top of Valero so we can have like a good community use case from the main contributors to the project. So uh, yeah, I'll touch you on this one so we can write up some nice blog about that uh, to show off. So. Uh, some of the different companies work on this one. Okay, that was everything from my side. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, last call 
if someone wants to bring something up. If not, okay. Thank you. Have a, get re a great rest of the day and talk to you in two weeks. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.